I'm here at the most innovative 3D printed house in the world. When I said that two months ago in my video, it was just my intuition. But recently they won an award for the most innovative house in all of Germany. And so I feel pretty validated. I really want to express my gratitude to you guys, the audience, for liking and subscribing and perpetuating this content, sharing it all over the internet. You've made it possible for me to come all the way from America to here in Beckham, Germany to see this house in person. Today we're gonna to take a tour with the head architect himself and see what this building's really all about. Get into all the nitty gritty details of how they intricately thought out every aspect of this building in true German engineering fashion. The scaffolding is still up and construction is still underway. All the printed parts are complete, but there's still work to be done. So don't be too harsh of a judge of an unfinished product. Mensa Corte is the architecture firm that designed this building, and it was managed by Perry, a German construction company, using a Kobad Bode 2 printer. My name is Waldemar Korte from the engineering company Mensa Korte from Beckum. I'm an architect. We did uh, the structural engineering and the architecture for the first printed building in Germany. With this column, for example, we wanted to show the potential of 3D printing in uh, designing building elements. With this uh, overhanging slab, for example, at the rooftop, uh, we wanted to point out the potential of 3D printing and wanted to show that it's possible to construct such elements also in, in the construction uh, of uh, concrete printing buildings. The uh, overhanging part of the roof slab is made of prefabricated elements. We had to support them during the, the whole building process until the concrete and situ concrete came onto the prefabricated elements and then we were able to remove them after 14 days. Here you can see some, some printed wave elements. It's just to, to define the facade, special textures on the facade or some special marks. It's part of the design of the building. So we just painted these elements on top just to put them out in, in the view of the building. The scaffolding is here because we need it for the painting for the finish of the facade. It's going to be removed in about 14 days. Many companies would keep this project secretive at this state, so I have huge respect for the transparency Mensa Corte is giving us, letting me tour this project today. All right, let's take a look inside. Yeah. We're now in the entrance area of our building. In front of me you see the first bathroom. It's a bathroom for guests. Behind me um, is the way to the living and the dining room. And uh, on the left hand we have a staircase, which has also the round corners just to show the potential of 3D printing. Here we have got also a rounded corner because it just underlines the design of the building. Just the, the flow, the design of the building is, has been repeated inside the building also. So as you can see here, here's a little part of the wall which has been plastered for covering it with tiles. It's not finished yet, it's uh, under construction. This one is the kitchen area we see here. Here we've got all the installations for the kitchen. So you see a lot of power outlets in the walls. You see a lot of outlets for water, for wastewater. So all these elements uh, have been implemented into the concrete printing process. And the machine had the information where the power outlet is. So the machine stopped and we were able to put all the power sockets into the wall during the printing process. So all this installation stuff we did ourselves. There was no need of these companies to support us because all this we had to do was quite easy to do it ourselves. Place all these power outlets and all the sockets during the printing process. Makes it easier for the electrician to put in the wiring afterwards when the printing process is finished. So there is no need to cut off all the walls because all the sockets are already inserted. When the kitchen is completed, oven will be here over there in front of this wall or in, in between these walls. Then here's going to be the island for, for cooking. The stove is going to, play, to be placed here. So we're going to cook in the middle of, of this kitchen. This thing is going to be in front of the window. So you have got enough daylight for, for cleaning all the dishes. Most of the people who come inside here say when you're printing all these walls curved, it's not possible to put an, a usual kitchen inside it. So we decided to uh, take off this curved wall part and just print a style element inside of this so you can work with uh, standard kitchen elements. One is placed in between these two walls and one can be placed in two, between these two walls so you can use a standard kitchen. Here we have got the ventilation which is already included in the slab 
of the building on the ground slab but also at the rooftop. Here we've got the boiler uh, for the heating and for the cooling. And here we have the electric uh, insulation made by, by the company Gira, uh, which is delivering the whole smart home system for this uh, building here. So we are cooling and heating um, with the slab. We've got these pipes and the prefabricated concrete elements. And through these pipes is running water, which is cooled or heated. So you could, can do both with, with this uh, boiler, with, with the technique. The, the, the laundry machine is going to stand. So we've got this tube you see at the roof. And you're able to put uh, your laundry in the story above. And uh, to let it fall down directly in front of the washing machine. You can see a special element, it's a connecting part between the, the living and the dining room. It's uh, a fireplace, so we wanted to print as much as possible from, from this element fireplace. Of course we have to insert a, a standard uh, chimney, which you can see here, because we can get the permission to use our printed part as a chimney. We just try to print as much as possible of this fireplace. Theoretically, it would be possible to use that concrete as a chimney because it's fireproof, but uh, we haven't got uh, certificates for that yet. Once fireproof concrete is sufficiently developed and regulated, printed fireplaces will be a reality. On this wall, you see the starting point of the printing. So we have to print the ground floor in three different printing sections because we have to, to cope with the layer time. The layer time for the material of Heidelberg cement, ITech, is uh, about 15 minutes. That's why we can't print the whole ground floor in one part. In the upper floor, we were able to divide it into two printing elements. We chose the position for the starting point on this plate because we're going to put in here a big cupboard, so you do not see a starting point afterwards. We're not going to plaster this wall, but we're going to hide the starting point with a cupboard. Later on in the design process, we had a change for our customer. So we decided to, to integrate another power outlet. We installed it on the wall and because we are not going to blast it, it's also hidden uh, behind this couch, which is going to be installed afterwards. We decided to put a skylight afterwards into the roof. In the first two designs we didn't have a skylight. We are glad that we realized it because it uh, gives a very good atmospheric light for the whole feeling of the room of the staircase. So here you can see a, a concrete cut of, of a wall. We did it just to prove um, if this wall is really monolithic. That all these layers we have got really connected to realize this monolithic um, wall we need for this 3D printing. There is no reinforcement in these walls. They are really just mortar without reinforcement. There is no steel in all the columns we have got here, integrated columns we have in this building, uh, which are made with, uh, with normal concrete, where we just printed foam work for these walls, filled in the foam work for the stabilization of the building. The formwork is uh, six centimeters thick. That's the thickness of the layers we used here in the project in, in Beckham. So two um, centimeters high and six centimeters thick. There's a concrete core inside. And it was, was just to please the authorities. Theoretically, we, there, there is no need for filling hollow walls with concrete. But we just did it for the um, permission and for the authorities just to please them that they were able to give us permit set quick, yes. Can you talk about the permitting process at all? Oh, that, that's, that's really difficult. That's difficult in Germany. So we are not, not able to, to get the permission um, from the authorities here in, in the town Beckum. So we have to go to the Ministry of the County of Notre Dame to get the permission there. For the permission we, we need a Gutachten. All the tests you do, all the, the, the element tests of the walls, all, all the material tests and uh, then you have got an office or a university which makes an, an extra out of this. That's what you take and go to the ministry and say okay we have proved all the elements, we have proved all the material. As you can see everything is safe. We have proved the durability and, and all the stuff we have to do for normal permissions. Please give us the, the permit for our project, depending on, on that uh, extract we have got. Up to this project, we had no other projects with the ministry where, where we have to get the permits. Usually we get the permits in the town where we are building and not at the ministry. So it was the first time we, we had to go to the ministry. 
but uh, they were very open-minded because they wanted to have this project here in Beckum in North Rhine Westphalia and that's why, why they uh, made everything possible to bring the project forward. It took uh, about one year to get the permit for this project. Here you can see um, the, the children's bathroom. We integrated uh, some um, special curved elements uh, where the, the sink uh, will be put inside. So just to, to save room, so that's why we curved it. And uh, on the other hand, uh, it's just to show what's possible with 3D printing. You do not have uh, build only rectangular elements, but you can build it as, as curved as, as you want it. The shower is also rounded to create a special atmosphere because all these rounded showers are extremely expensive if you would like to do it in normal construction uh, types. And here it's possible without spending too much money for that. Examples like this of value engineering is what's really going to push this industry to the next level. We are at the balcony of the first bedroom of the house. We are really proud of this element we see here in the facade. So we were able to, to make this curve here below, but also the curve above. Really nice to see that we are able to, to make such elements without causing too much effort. This house has got five bedrooms. Let's go to the other ones. This is by far the biggest 3D printed house I've toured. Check out how smooth this cutout of the wall is. A lot of times when companies print concrete, there can be air bubbles or many cracks. This house isn't perfect, but it's certainly the best I've seen. It's important to also keep in mind, this is Mensa Corte's first attempt at a 3D printed house, so we can only expect them to get better and better from here. Not to mention all the advancements we can expect from the materials in the future, as this industry grows and matures. Here we can see one color we are not able to integrate into the, the whole uh, architecture. So you can see it here in this room, uh, standing alone. So we needed it for the current structure of the building, additionally to the whole printing, uh, printed walls. Here you can see the laundry chute, uh, where you can put inside your laundry and then it falls into the, in front of the washing machine uh, downstairs. Here we see the, the second uh, room for building services. So here is the, the heating, are the heating components. And there you can see that the heating pipes are going to the slab where the heating is um, installed. And here's another one, uh, another cupboard for the electricity. And this one is just for the upper floor here. Behind you can see the um, ventilation pipes. So they are also included into the slabs, into the concrete slabs. Now we're entering the master suite. On the left side, we've got sleeping place. Here we can see a walk-in closet. And then we go through to the master bathroom. Nice element, this printed wall for the best time. We were able to integrate this wall into the whole printing process because it's installation which will not be removed in a few years, but it stays at that place. So we decided to print this one. I've got a, a small cupboard with a mirror all over it. And here we're going to wash the hands. It's a little bit uh, bigger than the usual one because it's for two persons. And behind this wall uh, we placed a shower for, for the parents. Um, and you can go, can go inside this shower and uh, there's no door in, in between but it's just to walk in. We were able to build this house without any reinforced walls or columns uh, because we orientated on the permissions for masonry. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's why we didn't need any reinforcement. So we just adapted this one, this, this printed concrete, as if it's masonry and that's how we argumented it um, at the government, at the authorities. We are looking forward to do more of these projects, more of uh, open-minded projects, no standard projects. So we as designers are able to design more creative than we are able now because every round corner, every unregular ground floor costs much more than the standard uh, rectangular um, ground floors. And that's why what I'm really looking forward to, to push the thinking, the design thinking forward to be able to, um, to produce it on the sites, on the job sites. From this project we learned that it's very important to have a great team 
So we are not able to build such a building to develop such a project alone with a, with a company, with a planning company or with, with a printing company, but you, you need a team. And it's, it's very important, the team has to be ready, invent all the new things um, without thinking about money. So we didn't get any money for all we have realized here. None of our partners got money for, for the whole efforts they put into the project. I think that's very, very um, important to point it out that it's just uh, possible as a team. We concentrated on designing a building which is really possible to be printed. All the things we, we had invented in our design or put into our building design were able to be printed. I can't tell you how grateful I am to be here today. Walking around this house is absolutely incredible and it really gives me a glimpse into what the future of construction holds. There are so many intricate features that are so incredibly well thought out in this house. The opportunity to see it with the head architect himself it's something I couldn't have imagined only a few months ago. And next week I'm going to check out an even bigger project, also by Perry using a Cobalt Bode 2 printer. It's not a game, it's a red stick.